It's Catholic Connection. I'm Vanessa Denhagarmo filling in for Teresa Tamio this morning on a pilgrimage in Rome. We'll catch up with her later this week. She is tied up right now and busy on her pilgrimage uh, with Steve Ray, but we will uh, catch up and find out what's going on with that later in the week. But right now, we're talking with Benedetta Morley, Executive Director of the Divine Mercy Center. On Friday, May 18th, they're hosting their fifth annual Mission of Mercy fundraiser with Holy Mass celebrated by Bishop Battersby at 6 p.m. But before we get into that uh, conversation about the fundraiser, first we're going to ask Benedetta, what is the Divine Mercy Center? Benedetta, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. And, you know, um, you know, our listeners, I, I know very much about the Divine Mercy Center. I've had the pleasure of working with you on this project and very excited about the event coming up on May 18th. But for those listening, Benedetta, what is the Divine Mercy Center? The Divine Mercy Center is truly a refuge of peace and healing for those in need. Um, we're a lay association of the Christian faithful. Mm-hmm. And we unleash the gospel daily at the Divine Mercy Center. We live out the spiritual and corporal works of mercy through the mission work at the Divine Mercy Center. Um, we have many extraordinary healings, um, spiritual and physical, and we're open Monday through Friday and some weekends where we offer personal prayer with our prayer ministers. We host weekly healing retreats each Wednesday, and we have First Friday and First Saturday devotions, so Friday evenings and Saturdays, and we have many groups and parishes, schools and homeschool groups that come in for retreat service opportunities, and we have a men and women's group, um, and they meet monthly for fellowship and to help us grow in in the faith. So we have a lot of activities and ways to grow in your faith at the center. And we also have a really great outreach ministry where we have a pantry and a kitchen, and we provide meals annually, like 6,000 meals annually to people, and we go out into the community and just um, help. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, praise God. Oh, go ahead. Our our kitchen ministry was um, our kitchen we had to renovate it. It was, um, you know, really old, just, mm-hmm. and we had to, we had to do a fundraiser. We've been fundraising for like two years, and praise God, as of last week, the funds for the campaign for that project we received them, and now after Mission of Mercy, we'll be able to open our kitchen again and start serving the daily meals. So mm-hmm. um, that's wonderful. It's amazing. And you have yeah. about you have about um, six thousand meals annually. That you are so yeah. correct. That's amazing, yeah. Benedetta. When did you realize that was a need in the in the Divine Mercy Center in the area that you were at? How did that come about? Well, we oh, we started by having the daily lunches mostly for hospitality, mm-hmm. and and we realized that um, many of the people that started coming daily they really needed that meal, and then some of the people from the community would come in, and and they we realized they started you know. If they didn't have this meal, it was really something that they needed every day. And so um, that kind of grew because we started reaching out to the local schools and social workers, mm-hmm. and th- and those families needed meals. So we started creating um, box, boxes, you know, like a meal, mm-hmm. boxed meals mm-hmm. or um, enough for a week, you know, to help a family out, certain things. So, um, I mean, the social workers in the area – literally told us that if it wasn't for these meals, some of these families, they wouldn't have, you know, food. They needed the help. So, yeah. um, you know, people told us. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. And then I want to, I really want to mention to our listeners, and I think it's an important point to make, Benedetta Morley, is that your prayer ministers are trained. They're trained yeah. prayer ministers. And I think that the reason I say that, and you could talk about that, is because I remember uh, Father Ricardo one time, I was listening to him, I listened to him all the time, as much as possible here on Catholic Radio, and he said, I, I wouldn't let just anybody pray on me. And I think that's really important that you train your ministers. Can you talk, tell us about that? Sure. Our prayer ministers go through um, a year of formation, and they have certain classes that they take on how to be a prayer minister, what it means to be a prayer minister, um, a little bit about the Catholic faith, and and they have a certain requirement, um, prayers that they offer daily for the intentions that come through the center. So we, all, we have prayer ministers that serve at the center, 
daily. And then we also have home intercessors that they pray from their homes. And Mm -hmm. like I said, both of them commit to a certain prayer life every day. And so when you call in a prayer to the Divine Mercy Center or when you stop in and that prayer goes in our prayer box, we are literally praying for you. There's just shy of 100 prayer ministers right now. And they are literally praying for you, offering masses, offering adoration daily, rosaries, chaplets of divine mercy. I mean, they're so covered in prayer. You have the biggest spiritual bouquet at the Divine Mercy Center when you call Mm -hmm. in your prayers. Mm -hmm. I think it's wonderful. And, you know, uh, Benedict, tell us a little bit more about the history uh, about the Divine Mercy Center and your your mom, Catherine Lanny. Yes. So my mother, um, I am the third child out of four. My um, my oldest sibling was, um, when my mother was delivering him, he passed away. He was a stillborn. And then I have an older sister, then me, and then I have a younger sister. When my mom was delivering my younger sister, um, went in for her fourth C-section, and something went terribly wrong during the surgery, and she was hemorrhaging to death. And the doctor literally told her, make arrangements You'll, it'll be a miracle if you live through the next hour. And long story short, I mean, my mother was just devastated, and she began to pray with everything in her. She just started praying and begging God to spare her life. And the Blessed Mother appeared next to her bed as she was begging and praying for her life. And she reached out to her and said, Blessed Mother, go before the throne of God. Beg for my life. And nothing happened. And so she said again, Blessed Mother, please go before the throne of God just so I can raise my children and beg for my life. And again, nothing. And then the third time, she said, Blessed Mother, I too lost my only son. And although it's nothing in comparison to what you went through seeing your son, our Lord, die on the cross, please, with that suffering, go before the throne of God and beg for my life. And she, at this point, was just, I mean, she was giving it every last bit of energy that she had. And Our Lady bent down and compassionated with her and put her hand on my mother's arm and um, was consoling her. Mm -hmm. And it was through the intercession of Our Lady that not only did my mother make it through that next hour, she made it, um, she lived, she survived that experience. And as the Blessed Mother was leaving, um, she said, one day I'll do something good for God in return for this blessing. I mean, she knew she was healed. So never knowing what that would, would be, she taught Caddy kids home. She was an amazing Catholic mother. Mm-hmm. But in 1992, Jesus appeared to her and asked for a total healing of every strata of the church. And um, so that was the beginning of, he asked her to, you know, begin praying. And so we began a prayer group. And then we grew into eventually having a center, but in um, on Easter Sunday of 2003, Cardinal Adam Maida established us as a, a lay association of the Christian faithful, and then um, now we're at the Divine Mercy Center on Beaconsfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what, and Benedetta, um, your mom wrote a book, and I'll get into that in a minute, but what I, what I love about the book and what what I struggle with as a Catholic, too, is that God doesn't reveal everything to you all at once. And so it is truly faith, you know, that led your mom down this path. She didn't know minute by minute and, you know, hour by hour and day by day and month by month and year by year where Jesus was leading her, but she had the faith to follow. And what I love about the story. Um, And we'll get into your book. And I think that's really hard a lot of times for us Catholics is to, she teaches through her book and what she went through in her testimony that, faith and i'll tell you for me personally that's the biggest struggle it's like i want to know now you know what i mean show me it all right now and that's where um your my impatience comes in um but there is a there's a fundraiser um coming up benedetta that you could share with our listeners this morning and and they're more than welcome to attend and that's why we're here this morning talking about this is that uh so tell us about the fifth annual mission of mercy fundraiser sure it's um it's on friday may 18th from 6 to 9 p.m. right at the Divine Mercy Center. So you can come and actually see and experience the Divine Mercy Center if you've never been there before. And the evening begins with Holy Mass 
celebrated by Bishop Battersby, and it's followed by dinner and a program. And this is our main fundraiser for the year. This fundraiser literally keeps our doors open so that we can serve. And um, so it's pretty amazing. And you can, we're going to have personal testimonies. So you'll hear some people share their stories about how the Divine Mercy Center has impacted their life. And we have the dinner is absolutely delicious. We have a live auction with some amazing prizes, and we have a $5,000 cash raffle that May has recruiting um, sponsored. And, you know, we're thankful to all our sponsors, you know, Wiggins Nursery and the George Rosa family, the Red Wagon Shop, and a bunch of others that have really helped us to um, try to help us to make this event a success. Mm-hmm. And the George Rosa family, you have a lot of wonderful sponsors that are very dedicated to your mission and what you're doing. We're going to continue this conversation about the Divine Mercy Center with Benedetta Morley, but we have to first take a break. So stay with us, everyone. We'll continue this conversation. Hi, I'm Dan Weingart. Join us for our anniversary sale going on now through April 28th. Our family has been helping families like yours choose the right power equipment for your lawn since 1945. Our experts will help you choose the right product from top brands like steel. From legendary chainsaws, dependable trimmers, and powerful blowers, a steel is designed for reliability and built for the long haul. Visit us to see the full steel line or see all of our anniversary sale specials at Weingart's.com. Weingart's, Weingart's, everything from long to snow. Hi, this is Father John Ricardo, inviting you to join me as we explore some of the deepest questions that arise in our hearts, questions that shape the way we think, the way we speak, and the way we live. For all of these questions, Christ is the answer. Our individual and corporate relationships with the Lord, our relationship to the church, the precepts of the church, our relationships with the world and the culture that surrounds us. Father Ricardo discusses these things and more, all from the Catholic perspective on Christ is the answer. Listen to Christ is the Answer, Wednesday evenings at 8, Saturday evenings at 6, and Sunday mornings at 11 on 990 WDEL, 1440 WMAX, and Ave Maria on the Internet. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the image of the invisible God. He points us to our destiny. He reveals the dignity of the human person. He is the one who makes known the Father. Christ is the Answer. Ever thought you'd make a bundle by trading in or selling your used vehicle only to find out it's worth a dinner for two? Well, it's much more valuable to donate your vehicle to Ave Maria Radio. Thousands of Americans donate their vehicle each year. The donation to Ave Maria is easy, tax deductible, and supports our efforts to evangelize. A year from now, will you remember that dinner or your gracious and selfless donation? Go to AveMariaRadio.net to find out more. That's AveMariaRadio.net. Continuing our conversation about the Divine Mercy Center with Benedetta Morley. They have a fundraiser coming up May 18th from 6 to 9 at the Divine Mercy Center. With the evening, uh, the evening bin, begins with the Holy Mass with uh, Bishop Battersby. And do you have to be Catholic, Benedetta, to uh, attend the Divine Mercy Center? No. We welcome everyone. And we have people from all denominations, from all walks of life. Everyone's welcome. It's a big family there. So you talked about some testimonies that are going to be shared and uh, at the event on May 18th at the Divine Mercy Center, which is your annual fundraiser. Uh, but can you share some stories with us and in, in how the Divine Mercy Center has impacted the lives of other people? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the Divine Mercy Center, um, the, we say that the two rivers of healing um, are, are at the Divine Mercy Center, the Eucharist and reconciliation. So I all love it. Healing, I love comes that. right from there. So, um, so every day, I mean, there's definitely blessings. But actually, this past week, uh, last week, we have been we received I received a phone call from an individual that we have been praying for every single day, and this person had cancer in different areas of their body and serious. Um, they received a scan, and they called me right after that scan, and complete healing. Wow. They can't find any cancer in this person's body. So, I mean, Jesus is the divine healer, and when we have faith, there are no limits to what he can do. 
So that was that was recently last week. Wow. And you know, other testimonies like the kitchen. Um we hear so many times there are literally people, um, like I said, social workers, the the principal of the little elementary school behind us. These people are so thankful for the meals that they receive. And I mean, just a couple of years ago we, we gave over we helped over one hundred families each on Christmas and Thanksgiving, we gave them complete dinners. And these mm-hmm. people were so thankful, you know, just um, they couldn't talk enough about how mm-hmm. thankful they were to receive that, that outreach. And um, most recently, this past Divine Mercy Sunday, which was an amazing celebration at the Divine Mercy Center, we were mm-hmm. just packed. And um, there were person after person who just came up to us um, the staff and our board members and the volunteers and just telling us, I don't know what we would do without this place. It, this has helped me grow so much spiritually. Um, I'm growing in my face and I have so much joy. I mean, it's changing people's lives. The miracles are great um, when people are, have these um, physical healings. That's wonderful. But equally amazing are the daily walk of life that people come to the Divine Mercy Center and by taking part in our retreats and um, through the, the prayers and the weekly masses and going to confession regularly, their lives are, are changing dramatically and they're growing closer to the Lord and they're having um, a conversion or a deeper conversion. So, mm-hmm. you know, a, a nun came up to my mom on Divine Mercy Sunday and she said, don't ever give up. You can never give up. Look at what you're doing. Look at what this ministry is doing. Look at how many people you're helping. So, I mean, that was just, mm-hmm. you know, like a little angel speaking to us yeah. to keep us doing what we're doing. You know, it's it's wonderful, um, Benedetta, that you do have these testimonies. But in reality, you'll never really know how many lives you'll ever touch until uh, your mom and you and uh, you meet your maker. You just won't know. And it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You just know, like the nun said. You are you're making a difference, and don't ever stop. And it does. You don't have to know every single person, but having those testimonies here and there are so important to share with others. You know, you mentioned mm-hmm. your mom's book, Benedetta, um, and her experience and what led to open the center. So, can you tell us about the book? Sure. The book is titled "A Call to Trust," and in it, um, she describes her experiences of um, in more depth of what I was talking about before on her deathbed and you know, how the ministry began and through the years. So you really get to journey with us through that book on the Divine Mercy Center and the ministry. But in the back of the book is particularly special. In the back of the book, there's the actual, um, some of the messages from our Lord and the Blessed Mother and some prayers in there, um, what they shared with my mom on different dates. So you can actually read that in, in the book. Mm -hmm. The book is a great read. I I, I have read it. I loved it. I think it's so important that everybody read that book uh, and visit Mm -hmm. the Divine Mercy Center. And and a great way to visit the Divine Mercy Center, if you've never been there, is to go to the fundraiser uh, coming up on May 18th. And uh, there's going to be a Mass with Bishop Battersby. Um, So tell us again, Benedetta, we have a couple of minutes here left in this hour with you, about the Divine Mercy Center, about the fundraiser, and why is it so important to you? And into the into your ministry. Well, it's it's a testimony and it's a support of everything that we do. Um, again, you get to hear about the work that we do, and you get to support it right there. Mm-hmm. Um, this fundraiser keeps our doors open. Without it, you know, we we can't survive without this fundraiser. So mm-hmm. it really truly is important if you support the work of the Divine Mercy Center, or if you just support helping people in need physically, spiritually. Um, putting food on people's table and helping people um, grow in their faith and have a deeper conversion with our Lord, then this is something that you would want to support. And people could sponsor, right? I mean, businesses may be listening. There might be individuals, families. There's still an opportunity to sponsor the event if they wanted to, Benedetta? Yes, and you can go right on our website. We have um, a yearbook, an annual yearbook, yearbook where you could place an ad. Um, we have sponsorship opportunities, and you can also buy tickets in our raffle. We only have 2,000 printed, so the odds of you winning are really great. So you can call the Divine Mercy Center, and we can um, 
get you the tickets that you need. And again, you can go to our website. Everything's right there. You can purchase tickets on the website to the event. And we sell out every year, so you'll want to get them sooner than later. But um, we're a 501c3. Everything is tax deductible, so that's great, too. That is wonderful. And then, you know, you, your mom will be there as well to talk, right, to the guests, for those people yeah. that maybe yeah. have never met her? Yes, you can go there. You can meet her. You'll have the opportunity to buy, um, purchase um, a call to trust if you would like, and she can personally autograph it for you if you would like that as well. So that's a, a bonus. Yes. Yeah. And so we have about a minute left, Ben, and i got to ask you, what? moved you to want to take on the ministry, your, the, what your mom was called by, by Jesus and Mary to do? What moved you to want to participate and do the work that you do? Well, it's a very long story, but in short, <laughs> okay, I, <laughs> I had a personal conversion through the ministries of the Divine Mercy Center. So this is something that has impacted my life okay. tremendously and continues to. So, yeah, another story, but, yeah, definitely my heart is this ministry. Great. And it's a, lot, it's, it's a lot of work, and I know that firsthand, having worked yeah. with her the last couple of months and see what she's doing and what is involved in, in the lives that they're changing. And blah, 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 blah. We'll see you on May 18th. I hope other people can join uh, the Divine Mercy Center on that day. And just go, t- go, go stop by and see what's going on there. Benedetta, thanks for joining us. Thank you. God bless you. Thanks. And uh, stay with us, everyone. We're going to move into the 9 o'clock hour. We have a couple guests. Lisa Duffy is going to be joining with us, and so is Father Tobin. I'm Vanessa Denha, filling in for Teresa Tamio.